House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8, The Lord of the Tides, contains a lot of hidden details, future setup, and Game of Thrones connections. Warning, contains spoilers for House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8, The Lord of the Tides. House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8 is full of hidden details, small moments of foreshadowing, and Game of Thrones connections, ranging from dragon eggs to Easter eggs. After previous recastings, House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8 has yet another significant time jump, with the actors playing Alicent Hightower's children and Rhaenyra Targaryen and Leaners Velaryon's kids all changing. It's been at least six years since House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 7 seconds ending and Leaners' death, with things once again drastically altered. King Viserys somehow clings onto life, with Alicent and Otto Hightower doing most of the ruling. Rhaenyra and Demon, meanwhile, have already had two children, Egon and Viserys, with a third on the way, and their kids are much older, if not wiser. All of this results in The Lord of the Tides being among the most drama-filled episodes of the show yet. It's full of tension, of small character moments, and of sequences and events packed with meaning and set up for things to come later in the story when the Dance of the Dragons properly begins. All the key and hidden details in House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8. Those dragon eggs Demon has are important, not for the first time in House of the Dragon. Demon Targaryen is seen in possession of a dragon egg, though this time it's one he didn't steal. Demon mentions getting three eggs from Syrax's latest clutch, which is important for a couple of reasons. It's unknown exactly how many dragons came from Syrax, but the one definite is Morning, who will be flown by Rena Targaryen in House of the Dragon. It's also an indication of a key battle line in the Dance of the Dragons, which will see Rhaenyra and Demon's Black's faction looking to get both more dragons and more dragon riders, so this is an early tease of the war to come. Jackery's High Valyrian lesson is a major Egon the Conqueror moment. Jackery's Valyrian learns to speak High Valyrian in House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8, and it doubles as a history lesson. Among the lines he attempts to deliver are about how Egon landed at the Blackwater Rush, which is a reference to Egon's landing that came on the undefended lands there, beginning his conquest of Westeros. It was also at the mouth of the Blackwater Rush that the Conqueror had Egonfort, his first castle, built. Lord Caswell is a key supporter of Rhaenyra. When Rhaenyra and Demon arrive in King's Landing, the only person there to greet them is Lord Caswell, who was previously seen in House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 6. That nicely sets up his role in the Dance of the Dragons. Caswell is a Rhaenyra loyalist who, after Visory's death, is imprisoned by the Greens and ultimately killed rather than swearing allegiance to Egon. The seven-pointed star in the Red Keep and a license necklace are deeper than you think. The Red Keep has, as Rhaenyra and Demon note, underwent some redecoration, most notably with the addition of the seven-pointed star, this itself echoing a change Joffrey Baratheon would make after becoming king. The seven-pointed star is also seen on both necklaces a license wears in House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8, one large and one small, all of which reflects just how pious and self-righteous she has become. This will also factor into the future in the Dance of the Dragons. In the book, a licensed son Egon is crowned by Septon Eustace, with the faith of the Seven, who have long been supported by House Hightower, behind his claim to the Iron Throne over Rhaenyra's. Otto's insult to Rhaenyra and Demon. Rhaenyra and Demon Targaryen arrive back in King's Landing in House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8, with a rather muted reception. Shortly after, when informed of their guest's arrival, Otto states that he hopes they were given a greeting as befits their status, and it's revealed it went according to his plan. The theme of the episode's later scenes may have been unity, but even just from this moment it was clear how Otto was looking to insult and undermine his rivals. While licensed Sir Rick, Uric confusion matters. A license speaks to a knight of the Kingsguard whom she mistakenly calls Sir Rick, before he corrects her that it's actually Uric. This isn't just a wrong name. But the introduction to the Cargills, Eric and Eric are identical twins and both members of the Kingsguard. In Fire and Blood, Eric replaced Harwin Strong as Rhaenyra's sworn shield, and sides with her faction in the Dance of the Dragons. It's perhaps a little telling that Alicent was assuming she spoke to Eric. Unlike his brother, he will side with the Greens during the Targaryen Civil War. There is also a Rick and Uric confusion to be found in A Song of Ice and Fire, with Lady Olin and Tyrell. Her personal guardsmen are called Uric and Uric but, as she cannot tell them apart, she simply calls them left and right. A license you are no son of mine is a Tywin Lannister callback. A license may think her love for her kids is something she and Rhaenyra have in common, but she disowns Egon after it's revealed he sexually assaulted Diana. A license tells Egon you are no son of mine. And, while she may have been compared to Cersei Lannister before now, actually echoes another member of the family, Tywin. He spoke those exact words to Tyrion in Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode 10, right before he died on the privy, so things could have gone a lot worse for Alicent at that moment. Moon Tea and Milk of the Poppy A Alicent can be seen giving Diana a drink, 
which is apparently just to be safe. This is moon tea, essentially Westero's equivalent of the morning after pill, which shows just how much she has changed. Young Alicent was shocked and appalled to hear Rhaenyra had been given moon tea after her dalliances with Demon and Sir Kristen Cole. Later, Elysian can be seen given visories some milk of the poppy, which is made from crushed poppies and used as a painkiller, though can also render its drinker unconscious like a Westerosi morphine. It was seen a few times in Game of Thrones, including being given to Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark shortly before their deaths. Visories really is a name fit for a king. When baby Visories is introduced to his namesake, he says that's a name fit for a king dot 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 and he's more right than he knows. Although it's Visories' brother, Egon, who will sit on the Iron Throne first, he too will be crowned after him, becoming King Visories too. These words also have a similarity to those Rieger says in a vision had by Deaneries in A Song of Ice and Fire, talking about his own son, Egon, and saying, what better name for a king? Rhaenyra and Demon's son Egon has his own Visories connection. Egon, of course, isn't just a good name for a king, but a multi-layered choice by Rhaenyra and Demon for their son. It's an insult to a licent, who also has a child by that name, and it's a nod to Egon the Conqueror. But there's also another link. Visories and Demon had another brother, who died before he was even one year old. His name, Egon, obviously. Rhaenys at the heart tree continues the HOTD trend. After arriving in King's Landing, Rhaenys is found by Rhaenyra at the Weirwood Tree in the Red Keep's Godswood. It's an interesting choice that continues to align House of the Dragons Targaryens with the Old Gods. Though Egon the Conqueror converted to the Faith of the Seven, largely as a political move, this provides a clearer contrast between the Greens and the Blacks of the show. As Alicent has become more pious, she's increasingly divided from the Targaryens who keep returning to the Godswood such as Rhaenyra and Rhaenys. Visory's mask may be a nod to the real-life Leper King. King Visory's mask is a defining detail in House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 8, and has a link to a real-life king dot 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 I in a way. Visory's illness is leprosy which, as the episode reveals, has disfigured his face and seen him lose an eye. This connects him to King Baldwin Ivy, who served as King of Jerusalem from 1174 to 1185. Baldwin had leprosy from a young age, though didn't start to show signs until much later in life. Like Visories, he ruled while having the disease, leading him to become known as the Leper King or just simply the Leper, and was left blind by it. Imagery of Baldwin Ivy, largely thanks to the movie Kingdom of Heaven often depicts him wearing a silver mask to cover his face. House of the Dragon may have aimed for a similar effect here, though there is no historical evidence that Baldwin really did wear a mask. Second sons are very important in HOTD and God. Visories may dismiss Beamon Velaryon as a second son of the House Velaryon family. But it's those sons who define so much of House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones, often because of their different responsibilities to firstborn sons. Demon and Emond are two key examples of second sons driving House of the Dragon's story. But it goes further in Game of Thrones. From Ned Stark to Stannis Baratheon, Tyrion Lannister to Jon Snow and Sandor Clegane, second sons shape the story massively. The Meisters and House Hightower's history. When it's revealed the Meisters have been helping with Visory's disease on the orders of Alicent, Rhaenyra and Demon scoff that of course the Meisters have been helping them. Although in general Meisters are supposed to be loyal to whomever they serve, House Hightower has a long history with them. One of the titles that comes with being Lord of Hightower is Defender or Protector of the Citadel, with the House long established as a patron of the Order of Meisters. The Hightowers even helped found the Citadel, and it's funded by Old Town taxes which, yes, run through the Hightowers as well. Gold Dragons on Visory's costume is a hint of things to come. Visory's costume in House of the Dragon Season 1. Episode 8 is adorned with several pieces of jewelry, including a couple of gold dragons, though perhaps just a symbol of finery right now. That will be important later. When Egon makes his own claim for the Iron Throne, he will create a new Targaryen sigil. Instead of a red dragon, it will be a gold one. Visories clearly prefers Rhaenyra, but he unwittingly lends a degree of support to Egon here. Helena Targaryen has another prophecy. Helena Targaryen's prophecies are becoming a staple of House of the Dragon episodes. Having previously foreshadowed Eamon losing an eye in much of the Dance of the Dragons itself, she makes another strange warning during episode 8 seconds dinner scene, saying, Beware the beast beneath the boards. The most immediate reading of this is that it refers to something involving a dragon which would be the most obvious beast in this story, with it bursting through the floorboards in some way, though there's no immediately obvious answer to what exactly it could be. Another possibility is that it refers to Mycerea, who is known as the White Worm and so fits the idea of being beneath the boards, operating underground. 
though not exactly a beast. Episode 8 does show the white worm is a creature that the greens should beware. Finally, it could be a hint towards blood and cheese, a horrific moment wherein Helena will lose one of her kids. Blood is a butcher and cheese is a rat catcher, who sneak up through the red keep, which could be where beneath the boards comes in. They are humans, but their actions, forcing Helena to choose which of her kids will be killed, are certainly those of beasts. Lucery's laughing at Eamond is a pink dread callback. A key turning point in the tensions at the feast comes when a pig is placed down in front of Eamond, prompting Lucery's to laugh. Whether Lucery's was trying to be insulting or not, the pig is a brutal reminder of their joke at Eamon's expense from House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 6, during which Eamon was presented as Dragon, Akka the Pink Dread, so it's no surprise it prompts his strong boy's reaction.